There are moments in our lives that take our breath away. We all need to breathe. The word for spirit in Greek is noima, P N E U M A, which is where we get pneumonia from, which is the word for breath. It is also the word for soul. Spirit is our soul. We are all the temples of the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us that it is no longer we who live, but Christ through His Spirit who lives in us and breathes for us. But life so often takes our breath away. There are joyful moments in our life, like when you first behold your baby for the first time. All you mamas out here, when you first held your baby, didn't that take your breath away? It sure did, didn't it? Of course, it took your breath away. Those are joyful moments. I will never forget in one of the weddings because, you know, at weddings, there is a tradition that, the, uh, that the, the, the groom doesn't see the bride until the actual wedding ceremony. You all know that? You know that? So he don't see her in the white uh, dress that she's dressed in. So he's standing here at this one wedding out in the front. And he's facing and as, then he turns around and he sees her for the first uh, time. And as she comes uh, out front, you know, he's so pale and almost blue. And uh, uh, he's like... He, he's breathless, totally breathless. I see he's having a hard time breathing. So I lean over to the groom and I say to him, breathe. And he looks at me and says, and with your spirit. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's all about the spirit. It's all about breathing. Breathe. Or uh, when uh, uh, one of my friends, you know, this happens to my, to my friends, of course, uh, who's a priest uh, somewhere else. And uh, in, in the communion line, there was a, you know, how, how we give communion, we say the, the body of Christ and this really gorgeous uh, young woman was in the communion line and... <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and, in, and instead of instead of saying uh, the body of Christ, he said, "Christ, what a body!" <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are. Of course, this only happens to friends of mine. <laughs> there are moments in our life that take our breath away. Like when you see the Grand Canyon for the first time. I know when I saw the Grand Canyon for the first time, I went to the Grand Canyon with my grandmother when she was visiting me. We went. I should post a picture on Facebook. She didn't want to get closer. <laughs> it was something to behold. Uh, but it takes your breath away. On uh, Friday, I, this past Friday, I had a funeral for a man who committed suicide. Obviously, that took his wife's breath away. 
I'm waiting right now to bury a child for one of our parishioners, their first child, nine months pregnant. She went to the hospital and gave birth to a dead baby. That, of course, takes your breath away. Life is full of those moments, aren't they? Painful moments. Your 18-year-old child is killed in an accident. You can't breathe, right? Your spouse of 30 years tells you, I love someone else. I'm leaving. That takes your breath away. Or you've been married for more than 50 years and you are left wondering how you will ever breathe again after your spouse passes away. How will I ever breathe again? Life is full of these breathtaking moments. And they're not all weddings and baptisms. But we must breathe in order to live. All of us, we know that. You gotta breathe. We need breath. In the first generations of Christians experienced exactly the very same thing at the death of Jesus. They couldn't breathe. And they didn't know how. They didn't know how they were going to go on living. They were gasping. Gasping for, for air. How will I breathe again? And what does Jesus do? The same thing He wants to do to each and every one of us. He gave them a spiritual CPR so that they no longer breathe themselves, but He is the one who breathes for them. The Bible is clear that it is not we who breathe on our own when we have received, when we have been born again by the Holy Spirit. But it is Christ through that new birth that breathes for us. He lives in you and breathes for you. And so what does God want for you on this Pentecost? the descent of the Holy Spirit. What does God want for you? God wants you to realize you ain't breathing on your own. Hello? Hello, hello? You are not breathing on your own. God is breathing for you. In other words, it's all going to be okay. You are not alone. God's breathing for you. Mm -hmm. breathe he lives in you and he breathes for you and what does God do when his people are gasping waiting and panicking in this room this is 48 hours after the death of Jesus they are all locked in a room they're not able to breathe in fact the Bible says they're huddled together paralyzed in fear, locked. The doors are locked. What locks their door? Their fear locks the door. So many of you have your, your door locked. What's the door? Huh? The Bible talks about the door. What is the door? That's the door of our heart, of our life, of our soul inside of us. And Jesus knocks through that door goes in through that door, comes in and says what? 
Peace be with you. And then what does he do? <sighs> Come on now, he says. Breathe my breath. Huh? Breathe. And he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. In other words, receive my breath. And God breathes for them. Hmm? So in those breathtaking moments in our life, maybe you're experiencing that right now. And if you're not, don't worry, you will. Okay? Because you know how that is in life, right? Huh? Things are going nice right now. Just wait. Okay? When one, we all have those moments come. Depression, anxiety, losing someone, uh, finding out your child's on drugs. You know, I get messages from people every day. I listen to people every day. People have really breathless moments in their life all the time. Can't pay your bills. Huh? Gas prices are coming up on five bucks. You know? Huh? Go to the store and now the uh, eggs are one dollar up than they used to be. You know? Huh? We all have those times in our life. I could go on and give you examples, but you know what those moments are in your life. And it is then that you have to remind yourself, I have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. I've done like 200 or so confirmations, maybe more, I can't even remember, this past year. You know, um, because of the pandemic, the bishop gave the priests permission to confirm, okay? So I, I got to do confirmations. There, was only, there were only like two, two people who didn't want me to confirm them. And you know why? Do you know why they didn't want me to do their confirmation? Because they said I didn't have the hat. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have the hat for the pictures. I said, no, if that's your, if that's your criteria for uh, confirmation, I feel sorry for you. But in confirmation, you see this, I have, you know why I'm wearing red? Do you know why I wear red today? In the because it's Pentecost. Okay, it's the descent of the Holy Spirit. I know some of you are saying, Father, are you wearing red because you look good in red? Okay. I, I look good in any color. <laughs> because it's the descent of the Holy Spirit. You have been, how many of you have been uh, confirmed that you, uh, you, you received the sacrament of confirmation? Okay. That you've been sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know that I grew up on a farm. I told you this in Poland. And when, when the pigs were born, or the, the uh, cows, the little cowies, uh, okay, or <laughs> you, you took, a, <laughs> you took a, an, a hot iron and you sealed them to make sure that they had your your stamp on them, okay? You, to make sure that they had your, your mark on them, okay? And because otherwise, there were wolves out there, figuratively speaking, your neighbors, of course, who would, <laughs> who would come and steal them. So you had to mark your animals, so that nobody could ever steal them. We have all been marked with the Holy Spirit, all of us. No matter which wolves in the world want to steal our breath away, remind yourself today, 
you have the breath of God in you. Everything is going to be fine. God breathes on these first disciples as God has breathed on you. Noima, breath. Ruah is Hebrew for spirit, breath as well. In the beginning, the book of Genesis, there's chaos. Did you read the book of Genesis? Do you read the Bible? Oh, I'm sure you do. Uh, in the beginning, there's chaos, disorder, and God does what? He breathes, and there's order. So receive that breath today. Shalom, peace. So what has knocked the wind out of you? That's the question today that I'm posing to you. What has knocked the wind out of you? The wind, the breath. What part of you feels lifeless? What part of your marriage, your family? Hmm? Do you know why? Because you're breathing on your own. That's why. Start breathing the breath of God. Because when God shows up in my life, everything is okay. Hmm? I'm going to be just fine. For if God is for me, who can be against me? Hmm? Got to read the Bible some more. What has hit you so hard that you don't know how to go on in life? That's because you're trying to breathe on your own. Stop it. Are you getting, are, is there a light bulb that's kind of coming on? Because you're, you're trying to do it on your own. Even if you join any type of 12-step program, like Alcoholics Anonymous or for drugs or for an eating disorder or anything, Overeaters Anonymous, whatever, okay? The first step is what? You recognize you got an issue and that alone you won't be able to get out of the issue, right? A alone? Do you, this is why we're here, because we're celebrating... God's presence, that we are not by ourselves, that God is with us, that we are going to be fine, that's your, that's, that's your problem. I'm trying to diagnose things for you here, okay? Because you're trying to do it on your own. Stop it. Let God do it for you. You let go and let God do it. And then, it, you know, I'm not by myself. God is with me. Hmm? We'll all be fine. We need God to breathe and to live for us. The final thing I want to let you all know is that before we receive Holy Communion, what do we say? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I was pastor for three years in the coastal town of Crescent City, right on the border of Oregon, and there we have violent storms that shake Houses. One, one, one year when I was there, we had 100 years straight of rain. Huge storms. They would shake the house. Winds, hurricane-style winds. And I was visiting this family once. And everybody was so scared. We were all so scared because of the, of the, of the storm. Everybody was scared except the little seven-year-old boy. And he wasn't scared at all. 
So I looked at him and I said, well, why aren't you scared? Why aren't you afraid? And he says, no, I'm not afraid. And I look at him and I say, well, why aren't you afraid? And he says, because my daddy is home. My daddy is home. How can I be afraid when my daddy is home? Is your daddy home? <laughs> is your daddy home? Is your daddy home? This is my southern accent. You know that I'm from the south. South of Poland. Okay? Is your daddy home? Because if my daddy is home, why, how could I be afraid? It's all going to be fine. Breathe. Huh? As we stand and profess our faith today,